Hi, this is Joan Hunter. Welcome to another exciting episode of Miracles Happen. Today, I have a very special guest with us. His name is Tony Kemp. He recently has just finished some meetings here at Four Corners Conference Center in Tomball, Texas. It has been absolutely the most revelatory teachings that we have ever heard. And I love it when people are gasping after he says something. And, uh, and they're just like, oh, wow, oh yeah, and everything. And so we're gonna be sharing with you a little clip from his ministry here. And then we're gonna interview him in just a matter of moments. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome to Miracles Happen. Joan Hunter has been traveling the world in the healing ministry for more than 45 years. Be aware of what the enemy is trying to do to you and say, no more. She is hosted around the world for healing and miracle services because wherever she goes, miracles happen. Joan shares her tenacious faith in how to pray for the sick. Bringing people here and sending them out to the four corners of the earth. That's my job. She traveled the world with her parents, Charles and Francis Hunter, for over 30 years. I expect a miracle tonight. Joan sees healing, signs, and wonders happen all the time in the name of Jesus, and she wants to share this with you. As anointed as I am, so are you. Whether it's filmed on location at Joan Hunter Ministries in Tomball, Texas, or from around the world, you can be sure to hear good news and receive the resounding message that miracles happen. God has anointed me in the area of healing, body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances. So stay tuned and join us for this week's extraordinary episode of Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready for your miracle? Miracles Happen. So in the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18, Solomon, speaking by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says these words. Where there's no vision, people perish. So you can translate it where there's no revelation, where there's no prophecy, where there's no word from the Lord, So you're looking at, everybody say the word foresight. Okay? People lose self-restraint. In other words, they focus on today and lose sight of tomorrow. Unless you got a revelation. Everybody say foresight. But then, Proverbs 1 and 5 says, a wise man we're here and increase in learning. Look at somebody say, you could use just a little more wisdom. Wisdom is insight. It is administration. Wisdom has to do with knowing the sequence of steps to take to cause that revelation to become a physical reality. So, for example, you may have a call of God into ministry, and it's legitimate, it's real, it's genuine, it's authentic. But in order for you to see it working out, you have to have, everybody say, wisdom and administration. Now, while this is true in ministry, it's true in business because you need to have vision and revelation and wisdom in a marriage and how to raise your children and church and ministry. But for some of us, wisdom and administration means that you have to build a platform. Everybody say the word platform. Now, when it was discovered that there was oil in the ocean, somebody said, how can we mine the wealth? And somebody had a creative idea. Now, let me say this, please hear me. A wise man will hear an increase in learning. Creativity has to do with thinking something new. Innovation has to do with doing something new. 
A wise man will hear an increase in learning. So somebody had creativity and somebody had innovation and said, let's build a platform so that we can get out of the, o out of the ocean the oil, the wealth, and the riches. Look at somebody say, it's not enough for you to have foresight. Foresight, vision, revelation. This is where the will of God says I need to be going, but I need wisdom and administration that tells me the sequential steps on how to get there. Here's the thing. If you were to look at Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, where it talks about in verse 1, the Messiah, Jesus, the Hamashiach, and it talks about the sevenfold spirit of God that's upon him. And it says, the spirit of the Lord will rest upon Jesus. And then it says, the spirit of wisdom. What's interesting about the spirit of wisdom there in the Hebrew, it means creativity. Look at somebody say, Jesus is in you. That means that creativity is in you because he is the creator. Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Creativity. Then it puts understanding together with wisdom because understanding is like this. The best way for me to understand it, uh, to, to explain understanding in the Hebrew, is it's like seeing the pieces of a puzzle and knowing how they fit together. Look at somebody say, the, piece, the, the, the puzzle pieces of your life, the spirit of understanding shows you how things fit together. So, you must have a platform that fits your calling. You must have a platform that fits your gifting. You must have a platform that fits your anointing and your ministry. And that platform must fit your personality. And you could have more than one platform. Let's just use Sid Roth. Sid Roth. Um, let's go back, became like the Johnny Carson of the supernatural. The Holy Spirit gave him creativity and innovation where his show, his show is always new because he always has a new guest on. And you tune in because he becomes an investigative reporter to find out what God is saying and doing in the now. You see the guest, you hear the guest, the guests come and go, but he's always there. Everybody say, a platform that fits his calling and ministry. See, what we typically want to do, and I get this and it's okay, is great when somebody can build a platform for you, and it's wonderful if somebody invites you into their platform. Like, for example, this is Kelly and Jones' platform. They've invited me in, right? But what if there's no invitation? Look at somebody say, now nah, you need some creativity. So let me tell you a story. <laughs> uh, I feel the spirit of Bobby Connor for a second, the storyteller. So... Um, and this, with the story I'm getting ready to tell you, it's my wife's fault. It really is. It was her fault. So she befriends these people that become friends of ours, and uh, they ran a nightclub. She became friends with the woman. And they lived upstairs. It was a very, very nice building, very prominent attorney in town, and they ran a nightclub. And then because of the relationship, we start talking with these folks, and God birthed an idea. And this was the idea. Come to the nightclub to see Pastor Tony Kemp for Inspirational Mondays. Well, if you've ever done any partying, you know that Mondays, people need some inspiration. 
So, and also, if you know anything about nightclubs, Monday nights can be slow. So we paid them to come in. I went, we paid them so I could come in to do Inspirational Mondays. Everybody say, a platform. Look at somebody say, money talks. So I would go in on Monday nights to the, to the, uh, for, the, for the Inspirational Mondays. And I would meet somebody, and the Lord would give me, like, detailed words of knowledge, and I'd go, this and this and this and this and this going on in your life. They'd go, whoa, tell me more. I'd say, no. <laughs> For those of you that have no hair or you've colored your hair, how many of you remember Paul Harvey? He would say, I'll tell you the rest of the story. At this point in time, I was pastoring in Illinois, and so I would tell them, you have to come to the church, come to my office, and I'll tell you the rest of the story. They come to my office, I tell them the rest of the story, and they get saved. And so this would happen over and over and over again as a result of Monday night. So one Monday night, um, <laughs> I'll never forget this Monday night, um, I'm coming out of the nightclub, I turn to the left, and there was an alley here, and this guy comes walking up the alley, and he don't look too good. It don't take discerning of spirits or a word of knowledge. So I feel like, okay, I should start talking to this guy. So I said to him, um, how you doing? He let me know he wasn't doing well. I said, hey, what, what, what's happening? He, you know, como esta? Uh, he informs me that he's going to kill somebody. Well, I don't know if you've ever done any street life, but the next question is this. Do you have somebody in mind, or will anybody do? <laughs> True story. To which he responds, anybody will do. Now I'm thinking, I'm standing in front of you. It's time to preach Jesus. Everybody said we're talking about a platform. So I preached Jesus to him, he's really demonized. But I, I couldn't get him to come into the church, but I got him to come on the land. So, you know, we ministered the word of God and cast out some devils, and he got free, and um, he no longer wanted to kill anybody and himself. And uh, he became one of my best members. In fact, in my history, in terms of people that I have worked with, my best members were the ones who spent the most time in state and federal pen. Yeah. In fact, I remember at one point, because of some of the, I'm not going to say gang related, I'm just going to say gang people that I work with, I remember one of them said, you know, you've probably been investigated by the FBI. I said, yeah, I know. No, I mean like real gangs, like notorious, famous gangs. Um, that some people who were part of what's called the 1% Club, which means they committed a crime that's on the books forever. Do, do we understand each other? Okay. So um, I used to uh, oversee these guys who came out of uh, very serious gangs in about 12 states. And I mean very serious. But... Look at somebody say, it became a platform. Okay? So look at somebody say, you platform according to your calling. Everybody say, you platform according to your gifting, your anointing, and your ministry. That means, that means, everybody say, Holy Spirit creativity. And everybody say, Holy Spirit innovation. Everybody say, thinking new things and doing new things. Now, I do realize this, that um, <laughs> some things you have to experience to see. Some things you can't see unless you have an experience. I'll explain it very simply. How many of you ever got a new car? Raise your hands. Did you notice that as soon as you drove that car off the lot, you saw your car everywhere? <laughs> that car was everywhere, but until you experienced it, you didn't see it. Look at somebody say, some things you have to experience it to see it. 
So now, because I'm a how-to person, I realize that in order for you to make progress, you must experience a problem. Write that down, a problem. Okay. In order for you to see the miraculous, the first thing you got to experience after the problem, which would be number two, so you write number one, a problem. Doesn't matter what kind of problem it is. Spiritual problem, mental problem, emotional problem, physical problem, relational problem, financial problem. Number two, and you're not gonna like this, but I don't like it either, but it's the way it is. If you're gonna experience the miraculous, Number two, you have, to, you have to encounter limited resources. Write it down, limited resources. Number three, wise man will hear increase in learning. You have to have a willingness in terms of your learning curve to experience what you would think is a failure. But write down, failures are not fatal. Write it down, failures are not fatal. And here's the reason why. I am gaining wisdom from what I view are my failures. And Okay, look at somebody say, these are your mistakes. So I'm gaining wisdom from my mistakes, but at a certain point, God turns my mistakes into miracles. So number four, I need an idea. You have to have a willingness to fail at first, then God gives you, everybody say a strategic idea and an innovative plan. What's interesting is, is this brilliant strategist, Jesus lives in you. He can give you foresight, he can give you insight. He can show you the sequence of steps to turn that revelation into reality, that vision into a victory. Miracles are happening everywhere, and now you can proclaim it everywhere you go with the Miracles Happen t-shirt and blanket. The t-shirts come in all sizes and a variety of colors, as well as with rhinestones and without. The Miracles Happen t-shirt is available for men and women. Get your shirt today and watch as God opens doors for you to pray for the sick around you. Both the Miracles Happen t-shirts and blanket are a constant reminder for all of us that miracles happen everywhere. And check out His Healing Promises. His Healing Promises is a selection of scriptures on healing read by Joan Hunter. If you need encouragement about your healing or faith to trust God in a difficult time, this is for you. Let your spirit be lifted and your hope restored as you listen to God's healing promises over your life. Go to MiraclesHappen.tv now to order your Miracles Happen t-shirt and blanket or your copy of His Healing Promises or call 1-281-789-7500. I just want to take a moment and introduce to you my friend Tony Kemp, and he is with us. And I'm so honored to have you up here with me today, Bishop. And it's I'm just very, very exciting. Be, I'm very pleased to be with you all. So thank you for inviting me. It's been such an exciting time here. And, uh, and like I said in the intro here, it was just like, you know, oh, yeah, yes, wow, praise God. Ooh, ah, ooh, ow, you know, as, as the word just really went in and penetrated him. Mm -hmm. So give us a little special something just for the television program yeah um you know this the title of this program is miracles happen i think it's very interesting that there are miracles that actually have patterns and for example to give you an example of a pattern in um exodus 2 the people cry out to god exodus 3 somebody hears god exodus 3 onward moses hears god and obeys god and then you see the manifestation of the miraculous but it all began with an encounter and even though the Lord appears in a burning bush, that burning bush calls Moses' personal bush to be on fire. 
And there's something about an encounter that sets us on fire, that gives us a revelation, that produces manifestations of the miraculous. And so a big key is this relationship with God through Jesus, receiving revelation that gives us the sequence of steps that will produce the miraculous. Which is so true. And it's so exciting because many of you are believing for a miracle. And of course, we hear we believe that miracles happen. Amen. And uh, what little clip that you just saw is just literally a drop in the bucket. So I want to encourage you to go to YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel, Joan Hunter 153, and catch all three of his amazing, amazing sh sessions here. And people are like, that is so incredible. And it's like, and it, I'm, I'm watching the people, I'm trying to make sure they breathe, you know, because you get so involved in like, you know, breathe, breathe, you know? And, and I love it when, when the congregation is so captivated with the word that's going forth. Yeah, yeah it's the, uh, the exciting part for me is the revelation of the word because um, the revelation of the word um, removes logic and reason and makes the impossible possible. So in a sense, I don't try to increase people's faith. I try to increase their revelation because revelation is the jurisdiction of their faith. So where their revelation is, that's where the faith is, that's where the anointing is, that's where the power and the glory is, and that's where the miracles happen. And it's so exciting because we've seen so many miracles here, uh, the prophetic words that went out and they're like, how, it's like, they go, how did you know that about me? You know, and I love it when I give, I personally give prophetic words like that. And they're like, how did you know that about me? I'm like, well, I didn't, but somebody who loves you a lot told me. That's right. And, uh, and that's kind of, how, kind of how I explain that. But, uh, but it's so true what he's talking about. And we've got to get the revelation of the word. When we get the revelation of who Jesus is, who the Father God is, and the Holy Spirit and his word, you get that combination and it will open up the realm for miracles. Yeah, I, I was in California and um, there was a man there who came who uh, had a lawnmower accident and the, his heel was cut off. He receives the revelation of the word and God grows his heel back. I even have the, the, the photograph and the picture of where you can see the cut and where God grew it back. So revelation is so powerful, it produces heaven in earth. Yes, I totally agree. And it's so exciting, you know, and, and here he's like, well, well, how did he do the heel and get the heel back and all that kind of stuff? You know, how did it, how did it all of a sudden appear? Well, we don't know exactly except for the supernatural. That's right. You know, how did God do that? I don't know. Right. I just serve a God that does stuff like that. That's so incredibly awesome. Yeah. For me, the revelation of the word is in my spirit, but I have to um, do a Romans 12, which is be renewed by the transforming of your mind because you got to wrap your mind around it. Just to give you another example of a creative miracle, I was in uh, Detroit and a man came up, he had, he had been shot, and so he still had fragments, even though they thought they were gonna have to amputate his arm, they didn't, but they, his last two fingers were artificial. And so he still had fragments floating, and God removes the fragments, all of that's done, and then in an instant, his two artificial fingers become real fingers, and he's actually able to move them. How that happened? I have no idea, but he is God. He can do anything he That's wants. That's right. That's right. It's like, how did God put those two vertebrae back in their neck? I don't know. How did God do a knee replacement? I don't know. That's right. But I just know that many, many people have had their surgeries canceled after I've been there for the knee replacements yes. or back surgeries, neck surgeries, things like that. That's right. Now, for me, I had a heavenly encounter where I was taken to a place uh, where God makes body parts. And I remember the angel that was there because he had kind of sandy brown hair. And I walked in and God makes the body parts in the order that they're coming to earth. And so when a person believes God's word, they receive the revelation, they act on the revelation, receive Jesus as healer, miracle worker. The angel gets the body part, comes down. If they have a damaged part, the angel takes it out, puts the new one in, or if they don't have it, the angel just puts it in. It can be invisible or it can become visible, but it works nevertheless. I, I totally, I have had that experience. And I remember my first time really, really seeing angels mm -hmm. in my services. Mm -hmm. And and I'm like, look at those angels over there. That's pretty wild. They look like, and I'm looking and I'm like, they look like they have hunchback. Mm -hmm. And and I'm like, angels don't have hunchbacks, you mm -hmm. know? And I'm like, what is, and I'm like, 
I don't know. That was just kind of strange. And, and so I said, well, somebody over here ha- needs a new heart. And I saw him go like this and then kind of like throw it. And yes. the person went boom in their chair and they, they got their new heart. Yes. And I'm like, those are not a hunchback. Those are as a backpack of body parts. That's right. That's right. You know, that's and right. I always tell people that's when you made a decision to come, your order went into the parts department. That's right. And so they're here in the atmosphere. They've left the heavenlies, you know, and they're here in the atmosphere. How does that happen? I don't know. I just see it happen all the time, and I just, of course, give God the glory for it. Yeah, I was in Branson, Missouri. This is this is funny. A woman comes. She has a glass eye, and again, you know, sometimes I have these moments, and they're just moments. You know what I mean? I have nothing. Well, God dropped the gift of faith. I minister to her. Her glass eye becomes a real eye in her socket. This eye turns the same color as this eye, and she's able to see out of it because Jesus is a creator. He was, he is, he will. Whatever Jesus did yesterday, he's doing today, and he will do tomorrow. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just so exciting. And don't you just love what we do? Oh, I got the greatest job I in the world. totally I, agree. I get to watch God manifest himself and do the miraculous. Yes, I totally agree with you on that. And, you know, to see God do so many miracles week after week, day after day, whether on the airplane, at the grocery store here, in services, and it's just so awesome. And I wanna really encourage you that some of you may go, that is the wildest thing I've ever heard. Well, trust me, that's just five miracles out of five million. And I wanna really encourage you, really pray about coming to the Houston area and be a part of our healing school uh, ordination classes. You can also order the healing school online. So I encourage you to do that. You can go to miracleshappen.tv and place your order. And and it's it's revelatory and life changing. When you get the knowledge in you based on 50 years in the healing ministry, and I impart to, to those that are watching and listening and reading, and it will save you 50 years of trying to do it and learning. You'll just hit the ground running. Just really pray about that because like, like Tony said, it was just like, we have the best job ever. And it may be where our paycheck comes from, but you know what? You can go and pray for anybody anywhere. Mm-hmm. And because the same anointing of God that's in us is in you. Right. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching today. It's been awesome having you on. Thank you. And, uh, and once again, go to Joan Hunter 153 my YouTube channel, and watch more of Tony, watch more of me, and all kinds of people. God bless you so much for watching. Miracles Happen. Thanks for watching Miracles Happen. Contact us at miraclesHappen.tv or give us a call at 1-281-789-7500 or connect with Joan on Facebook at facebook.com slash Joan Hunter. And make sure to join us next week for Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready? Miracles